I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another edition of The Great War on the Road. In April 1917, the United States joined the First World War. Now, I'm standing right now at the Meuse Argonne American Cemetery in France. This is the largest American World War I cemetery in Europe. The Meuse Argonne Offensive itself began September 26, 1918 with nine American divisions and two French divisions going into action. Now this would see well over a million American troops take part, and many thousands of them have their final resting places right here. I will talk about that offensive when we get to it in our regular episodes. Today, I'm going to talk about the cemetery and the memorial. And I have a guest with me today who's going to show us around a little bit. Now, could you please tell all of our fans at home who you are and what your function here is? So my name is Manon. I'm an interpretive guide for the Mesargon American Cemetery. And I try to tell the stories of our soldiers buried here. Okay. And this box here, what is this for? It's a special box. Uh, we have a Facebook page for the American Battle Monuments Commission and every single day we put a picture of one of the headstones of uh, our uh, soldiers uh, in our cemetery. So I'm going to send a few headstones for uh, this month and uh, it's a way to uh, pay homage to uh, our soldiers uh, buried uh, here. Okay, um, we'll put a link to uh, their Facebook page in the comments so you guys can go down there afterwards. Tony, could you pan around so you can get an idea of the scale of this? Now, the American Battle Monuments Commission uh, initially commissioned eight of these cemeteries in Europe for the American fallen, and this is the largest one, right? Yeah. And so there are 15,200 people here between the graves and between the wall, right? 14,000. 14,200? Yeah. I thought it was 15. Oh well. See, that's why <laughs> we have her here. <laughs> it's still a lot. To, to correct me when I say things that are wrong. Uh, okay, so we're going to follow you and see what you do now. Okay. So this is going to be for March. Yeah. Right? Okay, if you'll show us what you do. Okay, so first we, usually all of the headstones are clean, but since we're going to take a picture, we want it to be super clean. And you can see from the Stars of David where the Jewish soldiers are buried. Yeah, we have 268 uh, Jewish... Uh, um, now, m were most of the ones buried here, are they from the Meuse Argonne Offensive? Most or? of them, yeah. Uh, you have to imagine that during the offensive, uh, I mean, over, over 47 days we had more than 26,000 uh, dead, so there were temporary cemeteries all over the battlefield. And uh, once it was decided to have permanent cemeteries, uh, most of them were um, brought here. Okay. So in the early 1920s, we have uh, more. We had more than uh, 20,000 uh, uh, bodies here. Wow. And after that, the the government, the U.S. government, decided to have the families choose between uh, repatriation or permanent burial here in Europe. Yeah. And so that's why. Uh, we now have uh, 14,246 bodies here. But it's here. interesting that most of them d chose to have the bodies remain here. Well, actually, 60% of the families decided for repatriation. Uh -huh, okay. But it was a terrible choice for the family, because yeah, it sure. was really the first time that um, the American army was engaged uh, uh, outside of, their, of, the, of the U.S. And mothers and fathers didn't know what to do. I mean, it's, can you imagine choose uh, yeah. uh, between uh, eternal separation or have your uh, son uh, disinterred and reinterred? Right. Oh, that looks nice. All right. And so then now this poor guy, he managed to survive the end of the war, but he didn't make it home. No, uh, I don't know his personal story because we know only a few uh, stories here, but uh, he probably died of the flu That's because a guess, lot of so yeah. soldiers yeah. died of the flu after the war. And then we take a picture. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Now, are, are you from uh, this part? Of the country, or uh, I'm from the east of France, but I don't I don't come from Verdun, the area. I come from Nancy, so it's a little bit 
more uh, towards the east. Okay. So I had to discover all this uh, this history and uh, and territory because really the region is really about World War One. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, you have the battlefield all over all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's a gigantic. Yeah. sector. Um, now did you study history or, or what? I studied cultural tourism so that's why I'm more into personal stories than into history or the battlefield per se but obviously you have to read a lot and to learn a lot so uh, that's why I came to uh, actually make uh, tours and uh, talk about the battlefield. And uh, how long have you worked here? Uh, I've started I started in uh, summer 15. Okay and how, is, how, how many people run the show here? Um, so we have uh, a director and uh, his assistant. We have also uh, administrative uh, staff, yeah. a personal guide, and uh, the rest of the crew is taking care of the, the graves and, uh, and the grass and the trees. Um, in the summer, we are about uh, 30 people, Okay. everyone included. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for showing us this. You're welcome. It's very nice. Now, is this... Uh, organized in any way with respect to rank or anything like that? No, all of the soldiers are uh, uh, buried without regards to rank or even uh, or uh, even uh, origins or sex or uh, whatever. Oh, there's women here too. Yeah. yeah, we have six women buried here uh, and three infants also. Um, the only organization is due to architectural choices. Yeah. Um, the the architects of this cemetery were from the c uh, the Department of the Fine Arts, so you can see uh, there's uh, there's a lot of work about symmetry. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, you can uh -huh. see. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can see if you follow just one line, everything is perfectly uh, aligned. Uh, so that's the only uh, uh, organization I would say. Of is the that symmetry. the same with the trees? Of course, they were planted. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. um, there's a, a row around uh, each plot, and uh, every type of tree was chosen for specific reasons. Or we can we cannot do any uh, changes because of that first plan uh, at the origin. So in other words, if we would like to get rid of the linden trees, we wouldn't be able to. How, how many plots are there? Eight. Eight, Eight plots. plots. Um, this is cool. And you, you, uh, there, there's, there are some infants buried here. Some yeah, we have three infants. When uh, um, the bodies were concentrated here in the 1920s, the government decided to have the families, like I said, uh, choose between repatriation or permanent, permanent burial right. here. So um, the bodies were already uh, concentrated here. So some of them, um, th the families who decided to repatriate, they had we had to exhume their bodies and then send them back to the U.S. And so we had to uh, redo all of the... Um, the architecture of, uh, of the cemetery because bodies were being exhumed so we couldn't have any blanks between all right so they had to redesign between headstones so they all uh, that must have been a fairly big job it was when when we see pictures of the 1920s it was a uh, it was a uh, yeah it was a big deal yeah I can imagine I mean this is the scale of this I, I hope I hope you're getting that that you can see how enormous this now is now we're going up up here <laughs> yeah okay um, 37, the name is Bridges. And y you can look at the, the states. If you look at the states, you will see all of the 48 states that were uh, part states of, the U of the U.S. at the time. Are all the ranks represented here? Are there generals and colonels here as well? Um, no, we don't have any generals. I think the highest rank was... I've I can't seen even some remember. Lieutenants. Lieutenants we have, yeah, and I think the, the highest rank is Major. Okay. I think we have one Major here. Um, so, Bridges. Some of these names are amazing, like names you don't see in the modern world. It's, it's really the identity of the U.S. at the time and even here today, because some of the names sound German, some of them sounds, uh, for example, Polish yeah. or, uh, or even Irish. Um, and the characteristics of the of the U.S. nation at the time was really multiculturalism. Uh, most of the of the men who fought here came from uh, European countries. Uh, they had a European origin. Sure. So that's what we try to emphasize when we do tours. It's really the whole U.S. Uh, uh, society that is represented on the battlefield at the time. You can see Toussaint, Baum, Morlock, Hall. Yeah, you got something of everything. So we're going to take a picture of this one. Leonard Bridges. That's for April.
And so you, someone comes out here seven days a week to do this? To do no, it? we just uh, we try to do that once a month. So we have a list of the soldiers we would like to have a, a picture on Facebook. Yeah. And then we just take the pictures and, uh, and put it on Facebook. Sometimes we have a photo request from families. Yeah. So they have, for example, a, um, a great uncle buried here or even a grandfather, great grandfather. So we just do the same okay. and send them the picture. Okay, and you wanted to show me this. The, these two headstones, uh, these because two. they share a, a story. So if you look at this uh, headstone, the inscriptions, you can see that this uh -huh. man was uh, among the French army. So he was actually an American soldier. Who but he fought with the French army. He volunteered before the US declared the war. Right. Uh, so what did he do? He just joined the, the French army. Um, and uh, how could we identify the two brothers? Because he, uh, who he was in, into the U.S. Army after he got drafted, actually. Right. Uh, and uh, when he died, uh, so uh, Coleman actually died before him. Yeah, May 29th. He and, uh, had a letter from their parents saying that your brother died uh, just uh, oh, a few wow. days before you. So that's how we could identify those and two soldiers. And they are buried side by side. Are there many... Americans who served with the French army here? Uh, several, not many, but several, yes. Yeah. So okay. most of them uh, volunteered before the US declared the war. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's very interesting. It's very sad, too. Yeah. Now, this here, this is a bit different, this gold thing. This is a special headstone. It's the, the headstone of Freddie Sowers. He's uh, one of our nine Medal of Honor recipients yeah, buried so here. And all of this is only nine Medal yeah, of Honor? Yeah, only nine. Uh, during the Mazargan Offensive, uh, 53 were awarded. So that's a lot and not a lot because there were 1.2 million soldiers uh, 53 engaged. Medal of Honors out of 1.2 million soldiers. He died on my birthday, too. <laughs> So wow. yeah, he was from South Carolina, and he actually got the Medal of Honor in 1991. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, he was the first African American soldier to uh, get the Medal of Honor for his action during World War One. And really? to my knowledge, uh, there's only two uh, who got it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it's probably the most visited uh, headstones because as you walk up towards the chapel, then I mean the gold. Uh, uh, just uh, attracts it your jumps eyes. Jumps out at you. Yeah. Right here. Are the other ones? Are they, you know, in they're, the middle? Or are they also? Like on? I said, there's no organization. Oh, right, of course, so they're yeah. in the middle, just for this just uh, happened to for be. equality. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So let's. And where where are we heading? Towards the chapel, if you want to. Okay. Well, hey, um, follow me up to the chapel. Uh, follow up to the chapel, and we can say a few words about this. He's filming us. So you have the chapel in the middle and then next to it you have the wall, what we call the wall of the missing. So okay. in other words, on these walls you have the names of 954 soldiers whose body was not recovered or not, not identified. Okay. Yeah. Dedicated to... To yeah, the memory of those who died for their country. Now, when I do a tour, uh, what, what I do usually is I stop here and I uh, let people read that sentence and think about what it means because in my opinion those soldiers didn't die for their country that died for my country i'm oh french right. and they were sent for uh to to defend uh, france and the united kingdom and to fight for freedom some of them i mean they m the soldiers who are buried here they died for a freedom they would never experience so that's why i like to uh, have people think about it what, what would we do if we were called, um, called to fight for another country's freedom? It's interesting. It's a very good question. I don't want to spill your water. Okay, which way? Straight? So this building was built uh, after the cemetery in 1930. 1930. It was really uh, for the families who would uh, come here and uh, mourn uh, their dead. So even back then you'd get a lot of people? Yeah, we have the, the original register where pe people would uh, put their names and sign and uh, potentially say who they were visiting. Some of them would write a uh, husband, some of them would write a uh, son or okay. friend. We're um, going in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Do they have 
uh, like services here or how does it look no here? we it's don't it's just for the families who the ones who would like to just I don't have know, a say a moment. prayer or just rest for a few minutes and think Can about all around? of it yeah sure oh here's so here's all the divisions yeah this explains the stained glasses uh, oh yeah okay oh. So what you can see is the, the insignias of the divisions of, uh, that fought uh, during World War I. Really well done. Well, we know you got to go back to work and continue your stuff, but thank you very much for taking the You're time welcome, to, my pleasure. to explain all this to people out there. Now, you actually have an app, right? Yeah, we have a app, uh, an app for the cemetery. It's called Musargon American Cemetery. Musargon. American Cemetery app, and what kind of stuff does the app involve? Uh, it contains several personal stories and some of their pictures, so okay. it's a good way to have a non-personal tour in a way if uh, if we're not here to give visitors a oh tour. Oh, you can sort of do a virtual tour. Yeah, you have the lo a map of the cemetery and you have the location of the grave, so you can walk to different graves uh, and learn more about the soldiers buried here. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, again, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. Many of the people remembered here were from Europe and they went to America and became Americans and then they came back here to fight and to die for the United States, sure, but they were actually fighting for the liberation of another country, which is something I think most of us might be very unwilling to do. Now we talk a lot about battles that involve hundreds of thousands of people with tens of thousands of casualties and I know the numbers add up as just statistics and the 14 or 15,000 people here might not sound like that much comparatively, but when you actually see all of the markers laid out, then you get an idea of the staggering scale of death and destruction that this war caused all over the world. We'd like to thank the people at the memorial for letting us come here and film. They've been really helpful and they're really nice. And if you're ever in this part of the world, which is a beautiful part of the world, you owe it to yourself to come and check this out. There are links to the memorial and to their app in the description below. So check them out too. See you next time.